Lord. Good morning. Good morning, Sophia. Sorry to interrupt your lesson. We're finished. No, we're not, Sophia, and we'll continue downstairs. I would say, ma'am, it might be like living atop a volcano. That's been done, Mrs. Ringhausen. Certainly. And with a good deal of excitement, I should think. A sense of high adventure every day. And of course, danger. As to excitement, would you possibly add happiness? Why not, Mrs. Garrett? Please don't be angry with me, ma'am. No. We do love each other. Our being together ought not to seem so outlandish a proposition. No, ma'am. Except for every other single thing. He couldn't have meant that, not possibly. Well, I shouldn't have thought so. You don't believe he imagines where he and I to go. I'd leave Sophia behind. I can't be certain, Mrs. Garrett. I didn't hear him speak. Because others rescued her and nursed her? Is the idea that she belongs to the camp? Are we some sort of vicious, filthy outpost of Brook Farm? She's been with me for seven months. May I ask against what indisposition? Good morning, Mr. Bullock. Good morning. Good morning, Sophia. Good morning. Mrs. Garrett has gone to see her claim. Has she? Yes, with Mr. Ellsworth. I see. She asked if I saw you, please, to give you this back. Sophia can learn on another watch. All right. When opportunity permits, you might acquire Mrs. Garrett as few children as are in the camp. I take your meaning, Mr. Bullock. If she decided it was appropriate, other parties would be delighted and grateful. Yes, well, she will have to decide that. Yes. Good morning. Please come in, Mrs. Ringhouse. We have a seat. Do you remain of a mind, ma'am, to dispense with my services? I have immense respect for your training and intelligence, Mrs. Ringhausen. And gratitude for your efforts towards Sophia's education. I am ill-suited temperamentally to collaborate with you, as women in our positions must do. I see. I propose to pay you six months' wages severance and an additional $200 against the expense of your journey here and return to Chicago. While you're making your arrangements, I will also continue to pay for your room here at the hotel. As to those terms, Mrs. Garrett, your behavior is very fair. Mrs. Ringhouse and Cotton Mather would have found hard and joyless the standards you so resolutely apply to me and Sophia, and of course to yourself. I wish you very well. Thank you, madam. Would you? I'll not say goodbye to Sophia to spare her upset. Mr. Adams, good day. Good day, Miss Isringhausen. I can't imagine what you must be thinking at the moment. Please come in. I can offer you a whiskey or water that I just washed my face in. I will have whiskey, sir. Sure. I've just been discharged. Sacked. By Mrs. Garrett? As tutor for her ward. I hope you punched her in the nose. Mrs. 
is a day of firsts. Dismissal from employment, unchaperoned presence in a man's room. I'm sorry for your news, Miss Isringhausen, but if that's your first taste of liquor, uh, I'm sorry for the hand you've been playing your whole life. You mind if I drink from the bottle? No, sir. Get out of here. It's your room. That's okay. You're not a thief. <laughs> oh, would you feel better if I shot myself? Why do you say that? I apologize. It was just a stupid way of trying to be funny. Because I fear I may be killed. What? I can't explain. It's nightmarish. It's incomprehensible. Who's threatening your life? Mrs. Garrett, I know it sounds impossible, but I can testify to you, Mr. Adams, I would not be the first person she's killed. You returned his timepiece? Yes. I thought I'd told you. You did, Mrs. Ringhausen. I'm recurring to the topic, hoping you'll be more expansive. He accepted the timepiece, ma'am and raised another subject you and I ought pursue at some different moment. Must I credit the right of that ought, Mrs. Ringhausen, or may I suspect you enjoy setting terms? Terms, ma'am? Playing arbiter of the when and why of things. Pursuing the second subject Mr. Bullock raised, Mrs. Garrett, might upset a person now present junior to you and me. I cannot imagine how such a pursuit could be any more upsetting than the atmosphere of relentless disapproval that you so consistently generate. I'm no further need of your services, Mrs. Ringhausen. I'll say goodnight then to you and Sophia. My preference is your saying goodbye. I wonder, ma'am, if having made so many decisions so quickly, your patience may be short just now. And I'd appeal to you to reconsider your preferences in the morning. In any case, you'll want to retire to your room. I hope you'll recall that I've traveled from Chicago to enter your employ and have no emergent prospects. We'll come to some arrangement. All right. I'll say good night then. As is your custom, without having spared one affectionate look for my child. My training, ma'am is that being engaged to see to the child's education, my soliciting her affections would intrude on the mother's province. And I would call that a logical distinction, Mrs. Ringhausen, having nothing to do with the way people live. Mrs. Ringhausen? Mr. Adams? May I collect a change of clothes? Of course. I hope you slept well. I'm mortified to say I did. Mortified? Having done so at the cost of your comfort. I sleep anywhere, ma'am. I'm like a dog in that regard. You don't want you murdered in your bed. Perhaps it was irrational, my being so afraid. That ain't a test fear's got to pass. I know she's had others done for. So you said. Anyways. May I know your given name? Silas, if I remember correct. You have shown charity to one among strangers, Silas. Giving her great solace. Thank you. Or you're welcome, I guess. Thank you, Silas. And you're welcome. If I 
took advantage, I apologize. You took no more advantage of me, Silas, than the Samaritan did the traveler from Jerusalem. Good. I should tell you, Silas, that the Mr. Swearingen I've heard you say you work for is named by Mrs. Garrett as her instrument in her husband's murder. Named by Mrs. Garrett? Yes. As her instrument? Yes. Jesus Christ. What's your first name? Alice. Well, Alice, your story don't get less strange and morbid, you tell. Because Mr. Swearingen wouldn't do such a thing? Generates the fucking strangeness is her saying he was her hire. I see. Yeah, well, that makes fucking one of us. Would you introduce me to Mr. Swearingen? You're asking me to? You want to meet him? Please. Why do I feel lucky we didn't meet across a poker table? Anyways, he ain't up to chatting just now. Silas. Until late, Mr. Swearingen, I was employed by Alma Garrett as tutor to her orphan ward. Sack two days ago. Let her tell it. In the course of my employment, I frequently saw Mrs. Garrett under the influence of opiates. In this state, she admitted to me having commissioned the murder of her husband. What a world. She named you as her instrument. Said I'd killed him. She never specified you'd actually killed him. Left a vague line. Exactly. That I was her instrument. Yes. So we could pin it on someone else or I could take the fall, confess, Supporting your version? Yes. In writing and then subsequently escape. Such has been known to occur. Leaving the widow lonely at the bar of justice. Better one than none at all. Who do you work for? People of means. People you work for were hired by people of means. Don't get cagey, Miss Isringhausen. Let me suggest, Mr. Swearingen. You do not get distracted from your opportunity. Not who I work for should concern you, but the amount you'll be paid and the surety of its delivery. Too fucking true. Why, I pray fervently it ain't the Pinkertons whose pay you're in and that her dead husband's people hired to steal her gold. I got unrelated reasons to hate those cocksuckers. $50,000. Well, I'm hard-pressed to think who the fuck else it would be. $50,000, Mr. Swearingen. Separate from pay to your subordinates. Your pocket's not mine? Yes. Would it go against his for the pussy? No charge for the pussy. Mind if I take the day? Not at all. I've got a lot on my plate just now, and I'm feeling less than my full fucking self. You seem quite formidable to me. In any case, I'll wait to hear from Silas. Do. That'd be grand. I guess if I called you a cunt, I needn't expect you to faint. No. Getting struck be a first? How have I injured your interests? I think he's upstairs considering me for promotion. Anyway, clear out of my room. Come up and fuck me, why don't you? Simple as that. I fear snake bite. Come up and fuck me, and I'll answer everyone you want to ask. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Swearingen. Excuse me. Change of light. Pupil slow adjusting. Hope that don't owe to morphine. No. Anyhow, thanks for brushing against my prey. May I sit down? Too early for you? I don't time my drinking. Dan. 50,000. Now to me. Mr. Doherty signs the murder of Brom Garrett on my orders as commissioned by his faithless wife. Second document signed by you, detailing it during transport to New York for trial along with faithless wife, Doherty escapes custody. 
50. Now to me, 10. Now you to Doherty, 10. Now you to Adams. Agreed. With these amendments, 25 to you on signatures. On Doherty's safe return following his escape. And by your giving over the document signed by me to an agent designated by Pinkerton. Or burning it in the agent's presence. The second 25. Agreed. Will you draft Doherty's confession? I'll draft both fucking documents. Now, would you find your own way out while I explain myself to the guilty party? Don't brush again, my prick. Mrs. Garrett, why do you linger? The stages are frequent. In your past, your stated purpose, have you another? Please, Mrs. Garrett, do come in. Do you believe I do? My beliefs about you have to do with your soul, which I feel is cold and ungenerous, unless you are a counterfeit. And if you are a counterfeit, the deception comes so naturally, I'd credit its source in such a soul, meaning cold and ungenerous and as capable of counterfeit, manipulative and treacherous as well. Who can you think I am, Mrs. Garrett? I, a poor working girl. You are not. I only hope your high wrath, ma'am, don't bespeak some affair gone amiss. I hope to Christ not involving Mr. Bullock. <laughs> Even under such duress, you oughtn't presume to strike me. For who do you take me then? For who do you mistake me? I mistake you for no one, Mrs. Ringhausen. And I know you for a fact. All right then, Mrs. Garrett. You've had your fit of temper. Get the fuck back to your room. 